I've been sick for the last week and a half. You have been warned. Um, I wanted to talk about Oprah Winfrey since she was on every news outlet in the past 24 hours about Oprah running for presidency in 2020. And I'd first like to just get off my chest is can we establish and can I hear some agreement maybe in the comments below that I think it's really time that we stop um, selecting uh, celebrities uh, on for president, uh, a president position. Uh, there's people been mentioning The Rock should run for president, Oprah should run for president. And I, I just think, no, I think we need more people who are experienced, who, are, who run an office, who know about foreign policy, who know about immigration, who know about uh, health care, who really care about things that actually matter and knows how to make change. Um, I don't think us perpetuating celebrities as being the president who are already filthy rich and have everything pretty much given to them because of how rich they are. I don't think that's the best current place for our state. But Oprah, 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 Oprah. She did this this big old speech at the uh, Golden Nominees, which I just couldn't find any more ironic considering that she was talking about uh, some in regards to sexual abuse and the women that are coming out about the Hollywood sexual harassment scandal. It's been perpetuated in Hollywood for years upon years and only now it's been being spoken out against. You know, you have this Oprah who pretends to do this motivational, powerful speech over the last 20 years she's been seeing, oh, oops, ow, what's that? Oh, 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 silence from her for years upon years, photos and kissing one of the biggest people. But yeah, let's get on stage and do a motivational speech about how you are, um, you are, uh, are, are helping run the forefront of this sexual harassment campaign against women in Hollywood. Yes, the, the one and only moral Oprah Winfrey. She comes to save the day and she really stands for women. The level of fakeness and hypocrisy from Oprah herself is just absolutely astounding and I'm shocked that more people don't actually acknowledge and see this for the fraud that she really is. And I'm gonna make a whole other video on this, but I think it's important that I mention that she's not, she's had a lot of controversy surrounding her for saying some really weird things. Still, and there's a whole generation, I say this, you know, I said this, you know, for apartheid uh, South Africa, I said this for my own, you know, community in the South. There are still generations of people, older people, who were born and bred and marinated in it, in that prejudice and racism, and they just have to die. Now don't get me wrong, prejudice is bad. It's always bad. But I don't think that calling for people who have prejudices to die is necessarily a, um, a solution to a problem of people who are prejudiced. And ironically, unironically enough, I couldn't find this more racist in what you said. But you know, just because someone has a screwed up view of the world, or they are prejudiced towards people who are, are gay or who are, who are of different skin colors. But the moment you, you want death to come upon somebody who doesn't fall in line with your, your ideologies, your belief system, your worldview of the world, we start to get into some really shaky territory. Oprah has created a brand in the last 30 years, but despite her mega, ultra, multi-million, billion dollar brand that she's created, she's still not one of, she's not a very bright person when it comes to things that she says. So you don't want to be labeled gay? I don't want to be labeled gay. I want to be labeled a human who loves humans. I'm tired of being labeled. I'm an American. Mm -hmm. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. Oh girl, don't, don't set get up the started. Twitter on fire. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, what? I'm oh, sorry. My Lord. What did you just say? Stop, stop, stop the tape right now. I will say this. What? I mean, I don't know where my roots go to. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far back they go. I can't go on, you know, I don't know how far back and I don't know what country in Africa I'm from, but I do know that my roots are in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I'm an American and that's a colorless person because we're all people. I have lots of things running through my veins. I mean, you're gonna get a lot of flack for saying you're not African American. You know that, right? So I want you to say what you really mean by that. What I really mean by that is I'm an American. That's what I really mean. Yeah, here she is trying to get this girl to admit on television that you're you're actually African American. It just goes to show that this woman doesn't understand anything about how classifications work. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I'm, I understand it, if you are born in Africa, then you're African, and then you go to America, then you're African American, and you get a dual citizenship or whatever, and you're in the U.S. and you were born in Africa. If you were born in the U.S.A., I don't understand this I'm African American thing. I understand where uh, this. This girl's coming from. I mean, if an Asian person's born in, in America, 
They're American, are they not? I mean, we don't say Asian American. We don't say a Latina American. If you're born in America, you're American. It's simple as that. Another thing that I don't like about Oprah Winfrey is her fake bull crap that she spews on television all of the time. For those of you who don't know, she was um, a large promotioner. Promotioner. She promoted uh, the New Age movement uh, at, a, at a time. And this New Age movement, which if you know anything about New Age, I think is pretty bull crap. She talks on, on her show about positive thinking. And this is something that she, and I'm actually going to make a whole separate video on this topic of positive thinking and why what she says here is ultimately flawed. And I'm going to put this into my Journey of Self-Confidence series because I need to continue that. And it's really important that I talk about this because... Basically, she's asking what we don't like to know. Where do you draw your energy from to stay so positive, enthusiastic, and upbeat? Wow! <laughs> Question. <laughs> well, this is what I think. The only real, uh, you know, quest that we have in life is to keep your vibration high. Because I think all of us are like, we're, we're all energy fields. Yes. You're energy, but that's all we all are. So your number one goal in life is to keep your energy level high. So you have to do things that, that keep you on a high vibration, like, you know, like a good vibe. So for me, that's uh, eating as healthily as possible. Mm, gotta have some risotto, though. <laughs> yeah, and some truffles. Give them truffles. Gotta have risotto and truffles. It's, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's some form of silence or prayer or meditation in the morning. Mm. Uh, it's some form of exercise. But it's keeping yourself whole and um, connected and knowing that only positive energy brings positive energy. And that the moment you stay in a, in a negative thought, did you know that you cannot stay in a negative thought more than 17 seconds? Because it's really important that people realize the truth about this. Is that this, this mentality of positive thinking all the time, only being positive about everything in your life, is one of the biggest lies that you can believe about yourself. You know, when you get in the mirror every day and you're told that uh, Oprah, Oprah says that, you know, you're a beautiful, you're a beautiful person. You're a unique and special person. Uh, you're beautiful. You're great. You're extraordinary. You're, everybody's extraordinary, which honestly, that's a phrase that she says. Everybody's extraordinary, which if everybody's extraordinary, doesn't that not make people actually not extraordinary if everybody's extraordinary? Um, <laughs> but she spe spews this stuff positivity all the time never think never think negative thoughts never this never that and it is one of the most damaging thing to uh to um this millennial generation in terms of their self-image in terms of your self-confidence in terms of you building any confidence in yourself because we're, we're taught in hollywood especially by the things that oprah says is that negative experiences are 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 bad um when the exact opposite actually uh, negative experiences are really really good for you Pain and suffering are one of the two biggest moving forces uh, for an individual that you can go through and experience for you to grow and learn and develop as a person. You know, when you stand in front of a mirror every single day and you have a stomach hanging down to your kneecaps and you're saying, you know, following Oprah's positive thinking, telling yourself in the mirror every single day, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. The fact of the matter is you actually don't think that about yourself. Okay, you don't actually think that you're beautiful. This is the backwards effect. I think it was it was Alan Watts, or was it or uh, George Orwell? God, I don't remember the philosopher. It was one of those two guys. But they talk about um, this process. I, I, I'm paraphrasing. The quote goes something to like, if you can't see uh, the the pain and struggles on the front of your nose, then you don't know what the then you don't know the pain and struggles of life. Um, I'm paraphrasing that. I probably butchered the whole phrase, the quote. It really is a meaningful uh, statement that he says, and it couldn't be more true. There's nothing inherently wrong with uh, occasional positive thinking, but if you live your life every day following this new age movement of positivity every single day, and I'm, I'm going to make a whole video on this, talking about this in specific, because there's, it, I'm only touching the surface of this topic, and I want to dive into this much, much bigger and, and, and broader and deeper so I can help you guys understand where I'm coming from more so because I feel like me being sick, I'm not properly communicating what I want to say in a way that's actually effective. But at the end of the day, my biggest problem with Oprah is that she's fake. She's a facade. She is one of the biggest frauds on American television in terms of the things that she says. I don't think that she would be a good president at all. I really don't. And sure, she may have, have a, had a, a bad upbringing as a child, but her understanding of the world and practicality and medio meteorocracy is just shameful. We often think that there's uh, negative connotations with meteorocracy, and there's not. Oprah's whole, you're all extraordinary, you're all special, you're all unique, is dumb and fake and bullshit. That's the, that's the summary of, of this last part of this video. I want you to understand that. And I will make another video following up with this and explain what I mean. Um, but you can't live your life like that way. I'm sorry, you can't. You'll be miserable 
um, backward effect. It, it moves kind of like, you know, all you want to do, you want to be rich in life, right? You want to be really, really rich and wealthy, but the more that you think about wanting to be rich and wealthy, the more miserable you become, you know? The more you think about, oh, I want to I wanna be in a happy, happy, happy relationship all the time, the more miserable and more lonely you feel, right? This is very common. This is the backward, this is a, a way of thinking that our brain works. One of the biggest moving forces for you as a person is being honest with yourself. And I'm going to make a video into this too. And a lot of people don't actually know how to be honest with you. You can tell somebody, be honest with yourself. But if you don't explain to them what exactly that entails of um, not trying to avoid problems, because we live in this generation where everybody's trying to avoid problems. Everyone wants to avoid problems. But what you don't realize is that problems is the moving force. Problems, everybody has problems. And those problems, those negative experiences that we go through, no matter what it is, are actually positive experiences. They can be turned into positive experiences that help you grow as a person and become a better overall person in general and have better core values and a better perspective on life and be happier. That's the thing. You know, everybody, you know, you read all these self-help books, achieve happiness, how to, how to be happy all the time. Well, the reality is you're not going to be happy all the time. And to create a standard of always being happy all the time is a load of horse shit. And I don't want people buying into this crap that will perspews all the time. And that's all that she would do as a president, would spew bullshit. And I don't want anybody going through that. I don't want some president being fake with us. I mean, we already have one who's not the most, you know, honest and a, a bit disingenuous, spends more time tweeting in his office than actually making a change, it seems like, in my personal opinion. But yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest, that no, I don't think Oprah, and if she did win, she, and if she did run for president, she'd probably actually get into the primaries. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it, considering how well-known she is. And that just scares me. Like I don't, I don't want someone like her in office. Again, back when I started this video, let's let's go back to people who understand, you know, immigration, foreign policy, things that are are, are important in the United States of America, things that need change. Just because you have a lot of money and you're famous doesn't mean that you're qualified to be the president of the United States of America. Well, with all that said, thank you for watching this video. My video on um, John Cuckian, the video on Greggy Poo, and my video on Shea Carl and Scientology. They're all started, they've all start been started. The problem is I've been, <coughs> I've been sick, and I haven't been able to film them. But I guarantee you they will be hitting uh, this month. I promise you I'm not crying, it's just my allergies. All my links are linked down below in the description box of this video. Check out my Discord. Follow me on Snapchat at Repsion. But most of all, if you really like what I do, sponsor the channel or follow me on Instagram at DD Soulsbach because I run an Instagram photography page which I'm trying to grow and I really would like people's expertise and criticisms on my photography on how I can improve and become better at it. So, thank you for watching this video. And until next time, I will see you guys whenever I feel better.